sticking into our pockets, and I believe our sponsors would like that to be on a Nokia. Hey. Hi, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to our presentation. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Plasma and the mobile user interface for it. First, I would like to not thank NVIDIA for providing crappy drivers on Linux. The video projector is not working properly. Um, so our agenda for today, uh, we will give a little bit of introduction of ourselves and talking about the world around us today. Um, and then, of course, Plasma Mobile. So let's talk about this French guy. His name is Alexis Mena, also known as Dark Tears on IRC. He works for uh, Qt Development Frameworks, also known as Qt Software and Trotec. Main, uh, he mainly worked on QGraphics View, and he's also a Plasma developer since 2007. Yeah, and he started working with KDE in 2006. So he is also involved in QML development. So he's a great cute hacker. And me, I'm going to introduce Arthur. Uh, Arthur is, in work, is working around mobile development since 2007. And now he works for INDT, so it's a Nokia Research Institute in uh, Brazil, in Recife. Um, he was involved uh, with us, uh, working on QML and some uh, widget-related tasks. And on KDE, is mainly working on, um, on Plasma as well. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the road as it is today. On June 2008, we hit the number of uh, a billion uh, personal computers in the world. And we took like uh, two decades to reach that number. And uh, back some time ago, uh, somebody did this bet that uh, everybody would have a personal computer. People uh, didn't believe at all uh, at that at first, but right now everybody has a personal computer and uh, people are selling uh, operational systems and applications and we have this big market. Uh, if you look at mobile uh, market, you see that uh, mobile phone sales totaled uh, almost uh, 300 million units just in the first quarter of 2010. If you think about that, we took like uh, two decades to reach the number of a billion computer, personal computers, uh, the time that we, we needed for that. And if you compare to the mobile market, you see that the mobile market is really uh, hot in that aspect. Um, the smartphones market, that uh, what we are in and what we are going to talk about right now in this uh, presentation, it increased by 50% in the last quarter. So. You can, you can see where we are going with all of these numbers. So now you can ask, okay, but how KDE is presently that in this world, the world of we have today? Um, I mean, so far KDE has a well-defined user experience uh, based on what we are doing, like graphic designers, developers, and translators, everybody. Um, but so far we are targeting pretty much only the desktop, right? Uh, I'm running KDE, that's pretty much only what KDE provides, right? Um, it's a nice desktop user interface, we love it, we like it, our users, they like it. Um, we also extended a bit the, the border of KDE by releasing in KDE 4.4 a dedicated user interface for netbook computers, right, for s smaller screen. So. And we completed that, that, that dedicated user interface in 4.5. So if you look, for instance, this is the, the user interface for, for the netbook, right? So it's different. Uh, it's, I mean, like you can see, it's like smaller taskbar on the top, full screen content. And so we were able with our technology to actually uh, design uh, a user interface just for smaller screen. Right, um, but still the KDE look and feel is, is preserved, right? You can use the netbook user interface where you feel you're using KDE, and that's the most important. So we provide a better experience on a, another kind of machine, and, but still, like, it's still KDE. And what is the most important is like if a user like bring his laptop or his netbook and install the netbook interface, right? 
he will learn very fast from the desktop. If he's, use, I mean, if he's using KDE as on the desktop computer, move to the netbook, he will find his way quickly because it's still KDE. So uh, what about the future? Uh, you may be thinking, KDE on a phone, what the fuck? We still have a lot to do on the desktop. Yeah, that's true, but as we saw previously, there is uh, this big market out there waiting to be conquered, and uh, we want to be there also. And uh, the smart, uh, some smartphones, the, the same ones that increased their market share in 50% the last quarter, they are just some mobile computers. They're really powerful. Uh, and we want to extend this KDE experience that we achieved on the netbook to your phones. So you can have the KDE experience everywhere. So you are working, and then you have the KDE experience at your desktop. Then you travel, and you have that at your netbook. And we want you to have that at your mobile phone, too, so you can provide a, completely, a complete uh, workflow uh, based on KDE user experience. So you are not going to switch uh, that much the context and uh, that learning curve that uh, Lexi mentioned the earlier will be uh, not so high, and uh, you have the same thing on all the devices. So this will improve the user experience uh, on KDE alongside different uh, hardware devices. So we had a challenge. So what's, what's the state of the art right now? Uh, the screen on mobile, com uh, mobile computers or mobile devices, they are way smaller. We, cha we, we had that challenge when we first developed the, the netbook uh, interface. We thought about that a lot, and uh, we had pretty nice ideas uh, with the help of uh, KDE designers. But uh, on mobile computers, uh, different from uh, the netbook uh, uh, devices, they, are, they have limited resources. So we don't have that much CPU, that much memory, and uh, we need to think about that. We want to run software uh, of today's world in computers that uh, have the power of uh, our 10 old, uh, our 10 years old comp personal computer. So we have this big challenge of performance. We also have the challenge of the way that you interact with this device. We don't have a mouse. We don't have a, a proper keyboard or at least a keyboard that looks like the keyboard that we have on our desktops. So we need to change the way that uh, we think about the, the user interface because we have uh, a completely different scenario. We have gestures, so we have, we have to deal with all these these subjects when thinking about uh, the new uh, this new mobile shell. But KDE is not too bad in that domain, right? Like KDE is evolving. Um, as you can see, like this morning, there was a presentation about Marble on, on mobile phones, right? That was also about KDE PIM on mobile phones. And so KDE is like starting to think about, okay, there is a huge market, we should probably look at it. And so I think we need to, in KDE, to have a big movement on like starting porting or like having dedicated user interface for mobile phone on every, not every apps, but the relevant apps we have in KDE. And um, so in that respect, like some work started in KDE Libs itself, right, to support um, different uh, builds for different kind of purposes, right? Like if I'm building on mobile or tablet or desktop, right, I don't have the same needs, especially in memory size and stuff like that. So there is a beginning of support for profiles, right? You can build KDE Libs with the mobile profile where, where we actually cut down some part of it. Um, and some project already use it, like Plasma. Uh, when you build Plasma for the mobile, no solid, no WebKit, no can you stop, no KIO. So uh, it reduces the complexity and, um, of course, the size of the library. And for some features that we can remove, right? We don't have binary uh, compatibility promises on mobile platforms because we never released anything anyway. So, and it helps for packaging. I mean, if it's less dependency, right, it's easier to package. <coughs> yeah, and KD is, uh, Kevin is going to give a talk about the uh, KDE platform profile in detail, so I encourage people to watch that uh, talk. So about Plasma Mobile, the cool stuff. Um, 
So uh, Plasma Mobile, some, some research happened back in uh, the last MIMO summit when they uh, gave a lot of N900. Um, I think we had that guy that made uh, Plasma Viewer running as a home screen applet so you could see uh, uh, the Plasma applets on your uh, field on N900 home screen. Uh, well, I did some extra research. I was actually building and running the complete Plasma stack on the N900, and I was a bit surprised. It was not too bad. I was expecting two frames per minute, but actually it was uh, good. Well, not perfect, but good. Memory was. We were not very very good, but now it's getting better. Um, and then on the last uh, Plasma uh, developer sprint in uh, Nuremberg in February, we actually said that we need to have. Uh, user interface for, for the mobile phone. So we officially kind of kick, kick off the project, right, by talking with the other Plasma developers and create some stuff. So uh, the next slides are work in progress, right? So what we're talking about is everything will probably change, right? And probably this week. <laughs> um, so beware of filing coconuts. And it's actually a real picture. Uh, I took it when I was in vacation. Um, so uh, Archer is going to actually introduce how we we worked in Tokamak for around this like plasma mobile user interface. So uh, as Alexis said, Tokamak is our uh, developer sprint, Plasma developer sprint. But the Tokamak four was special because we also had the Oxygen team there. We also have the Queen guys there, so it was a great place to talk about all the all these issues that we we would face for on the mobile. Uh, environment. So we had these jack stand devices landed to us uh, from Intel. They were running Moblin by that time. We had uh, some Nokia's uh, N900s there running my M5. And then well, we had Qt that would provide us the cross uh, platform uh, experience. We had KDE, the whole libraries, and we had all the infrastructure uh, from Plasma that we already thought about. Uh, when creating the library itself to, to allow us to do this kind of stuff. So in, with three developers in two days and also one designer, we could uh, actually uh, prototype uh, the mobile shell itself. So we could uh, prototype the whole thing, test on the devices, see what was, uh, how, how was the performance, uh, in how, how we were going to, uh, to deal with all the issues. So it was pretty fast to get something and show off. Uh, so how it, how we started that? We couldn't just sit down and started programming, mainly because uh, designers and UX expertizers they don't like like they don't work like this. They want you to think about the problem, and they may may be right. <laughs> I will give some credit for you on, on this. <laughs> so we sat down, uh, the developers, the designers, and we started uh, doing this big brainstorm about what we are we had today and on our mobile phones, what we liked and what we didn't like. And uh, basically, we could see that uh, we, ha we had on my MO5 uh, and almost all the others, Android, iPhone, uh, iPad now that you can see, uh, al almost all of them, they have these uh, multiple desktops. It would be like the virtual desktops that we have on our regular desktop shell. Uh, and a grid view of applications. Uh, basically, they are all centered around that. If you look uh, at the different brands, they are basically uh, multiple desktops that you can uh, slide some way and then a grid view to launch the applications. By that time, Moblin uh, just um, had the netbook interface. They didn't have the, the, the handset one that they just released with Migo now. They, it was funny because it was last week that we saw the, their release, and they have a panel. It's kind of funny because we had that idea too, and they came with the same idea some, some months later. So either they liked our idea or they were thinking the same way that we were thinking, so it's a good sign. Uh, and uh, they have grid views organized in pages. So it's like uh, just more of the same. So we have all these options on the market. We have Android, we have Migo, we have iPhone, we have iPad, and uh, all these systems, they are just more of the same. So we sat down and said, okay, let's try to do something different here. 
what can we do to make us different from all this, these guys? So when we were talking, we said, okay, when I'm using my phone, I would like my phone to be a bit more smart than it is now, right? Uh, it's like, um, for instance, I want it to make, like, my phone to react of what I'm, I'm doing, right? And also where I am and, and who I am. Like, I mean, where I am, by, by that, I mean, it's like, when you're at home, right, you're not supposed to do work, right? So what, what, why do you need your uh, calendar widget on the home screen? You don't need it, unless if it's for work or, of, or I mean, for your personal purposes, right? Uh, also, uh, when you're at work, you're not supposed to have, I don't know, um, your Twitter application. You're not supposed to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and also, what I'm doing, what I mean, that's like, I would like my phone to be able to say, okay, I'm, I'm now working. I mean, I don't want to see the games. I'm working. Um, but when you're at home as well, in the same way, you say, I want to do something like related to fun. So bring me the games, not the mail clients, or at least my work mail clients. And, and who I am is like, I will, it's me, right? I want my device to look me. So I want to be able to personalize my, my own device by creating my, my own uh, user experience. And so we think that the, all the navigation in Plus Mobile should be uh, uh, related and around activities. You should be able to define activities. And you should be able to say, okay, I'm doing work, I'm doing messaging, I'm doing social, I'm doing games. And so we think that the desktop or the home screen should be around that concept. So you can switch from one world to another one. And it can be also done automatically, right? Let's say you're at home, you're connected to your personal Wi-Fi, up, it changed automatically. And you're going at work, right? It connect to the Wi-Fi at work or using your G uh, uh, GPS coordinates and say, okay, it's work here, change. Switch to work stuff. And also we think big grid views with everything inside is completely stupid. And it's like scrolling like crazy. And on, it's funny because on the last iPhone update, they work on the thing by just adding folders. And funny enough, the folders are named by the category of apps you put inside. So let's say you put games, then the folder will be called games. And so we think that when you want to launch an application, then it should be the application that are relevant for the current activity. If you're doing games on the menu of application, you should show only games, right? And of course you said, yeah, but then if I want to change an activity, we, like it should be easy to switch from an activity to another one. So you should have an activity switcher and it shouldn't be on your web. By that, I mean it shouldn't be on taking off the screen, right? So you should be able to switch from an activity to another one quickly. So, so far, this is the mockup we came up uh, in Tokamak 4. It's a mockup, right? Uh, we have a working implementation. <laughs> So the idea was like this, like on the bottom was like activities, right? Default activities, you, you should be able to create your own. And so for instance, there is a phone, like internet activity, like for instance, game, social, and so on. And then you click on it, and then it's actually changed the home screen, which can include the background, the applets, everything on it. On top will be a, a sys tray or like status tray, right? With like battery, clock, network signal, and stuff like that. And then the panel actually get away after some time, right? It's like if you uh, don't use the panel, then it goes away, but you can still drag it quickly. So how do activities work? Uh, it's still using the Plasma uh, philosophy, right? Um, activities, we think they can contain widgets, but widgets only related to the activity. I mean, in theory, you could have the freedom to put everything you want, but like we think that on the social activity should be only for the Twitter applet, the Facebook one, and perhaps everything related to social, right? Then you switch up, uh, the activities change, and then you, for instance, if you go to the messaging one, then you got your, uh, la, I don't know, last five top emails, calendar, and I don't know, stuff like that. And if you want to do more with the given widget, let's say uh, you should be able to switch to the full view, 
by Fugu, I mean the real dedicated application for it. Like we have now on the desktop, like if you use the RSS uh, feed applet, the RSS like feed applet, like if you click on this expand button, it actually expand aggregator, right? Which is the dedicated RSS reader on KDE. So we do think that for deep, uh, or I mean for, if you really need like the full uh, uh, features, then you open the dedicated application. Like for us, you can have the mail, uh, like, like last five mails, right? And then if you click on it, it's actually open Camel Mobile. That will be the perfect thing. So we can have a complete KDE stack, right? <laughs> I'm talking about that. Um, so for instance, this is like my home activity, right? I said, oh, I, I put a note, right? I said, okay, I need to call my friend and I also need to pay my internet connection. And, but if I click on the, uh, on the widget, then it open cannots, right? That's what it should do. If I really want to have more. And then we, on the bottom you see, like this is like the activity switcher is away, right, hidden. And then you can just drag the small bubbles and then it comes back, right? And then you said, yeah, but where are the applications? Um, well, we said, okay, the application that doesn't have a widget view let's say games for instance doesn't have a widget, then we said, okay, you just swipe the activity. You just return it. And then if you return the activity, oops, then the application will show up. A, a list of applications, but for the given activity. Let's say um, if I'm working, then I got only the application for work, like mail, I don't know, and stuff related to work. So uh, Arthur is gonna talk a bit about uh, the technical bits inside Plasma. Yeah, and just don't be afraid that we will show a little bit more than screenshots later. Um, so the technical bits, uh, how Plasma helps us uh, to achieve all this nice stuff that Alexis is talking about. So first of all, we have applets. Applets, they, they have this, uh, this built-in way to, rea to re react to form factors. So when uh, somebody is developing a, an applet, let's say a plasmoid that, uh, I don't know, the dictionary one, it's a good example. When it's on, on your desktop, it has a view that it's the full view with the whole thing. When you drag to the panel, it reacts. It knows that it's getting smaller and then it turns out to be a, an icon that's a pop-up applet. Uh, so applets can already react to different form factors. So it's easy to extend them to support the mobile ones. So we could have the same applets that we have today on the desktop, for example, reacting different when they are on your mobile phone. Uh, we also have uh, this concept of, of uh, data engines that uh, we share data between uh, different applets so we, we avoid uh, consuming too much memory. So if you have like two different applets for weather, then they are sharing, they are using the same data engine to actually retrieve the weather. So uh, you don't waste resources for the same thing. Uh, one nice thing about the uh, applets is that they can be shared over the network. So here I'm talking mainly about uh, scripted uh, plasmoids, for example, in JavaScript. So if you have, like, uh, let's say, you are working on your desktop, then you have all the, uh, the, the notes with the stuff that you need to do, then you need to get out, go in a hurry to your work, you can just share that plasmoid to your phone, then you get that plasmoid with all the notes, and just go to work. And then you have that thing with you. You can share images with your friends, contacts. So I have all my contacts that were with, uh, inside the KDE pin somehow, and then I share all of them with you because I'm sharing like Aaron Sego's contact because he's a hot contact. Um, everything is SVG themable. What does, does that mean? Uh, everything that we are showing here can be uh, themable to different brands. So if, for example, we have this uh, different company called Nokia that wants to brand everything to their own, so they have their brand on the, on the product, they can, it's easy. Plasma Red provides that. If uh, we have some other company uh, that wants to, to change that because they want to use the KDE experience already on the desktop, they already have that and they want to use uh, on the mobile too, so their executives get the full experience. They can brand all of that with uh, the right theme. And we also have containments that are just containers for applets. They are a group of applets. Uh, mainly containers lay out 
your applets. So for example, on the desktop, you have a free layout so you can move around all your plasmoids. On panels, you have a linear layout. Uh, on the mobile, we'll have another one. For netbooks, we have like the newspaper one that's a two row layout so it's easier for you to, to actually read stuff on your applets. We have the search and launch uh, containment that's completely different from all the others. So we have all this flexibility. And the nice thing about containment is that they are applets. So everything that I said about applets are also applied to containment. So we have this great uh, flexibility with Plasma libraries. Then a bit more of like technical bits on Plasma Mobile. Um, we, we, like we were looking about what, what we can use to actually hack quickly the user interface and actually to be able to change it quickly for different devices. Let's say, I mean, the screen is a little bit bigger or the resolution different. We probably want to adapt the UI a bit. So, and then there was QML or CutQuick, as the commercial name. Uh, uh, so we said we need to, su I mean, it would be nice to support QML on it because then we can actually have different uh, user interface for different devices, right? And I, I think at the end, Plasma Mobile should be able to pick different uh, QML files for different uh, devices. If let's say you can say, run on the N900, pick those QML files, and then load the user interface. And then run on this device, pick that one, and run on that. Because like, for instance, we got two devices in uh, Tokamak 4, which was, uh, they are really similar. That was the Intel device plus the Maemo N900, but still was slightly different. And the screen was a bit uh, smaller on the N900, and it m you might want to adapt some stuff anyway. So, QML is actually built in in Plasma Mobile. I think at some point we, when we will be happy with what is in Plasma Mobile, we'll probably move that feature back into Plasma itself. But uh, so what you can do with QML is that you can actually create, an, uh, I mean, the applets and the containments, they can be uh, hacked in QML. So you can create your QML, uh, you can create your applets or your containment in QML and then put it into Plasma Mobile. Uh, so, I'd, like I said, like designers, after they can say, okay, this is the uh, 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 the, Q, the QML file or for this applet, but for this device, and then we can actually have several different set of QML file for different applets. Would be nice. Then we got a QML script engine, which means that you can actually package and ship QML applets on kdeapps.org. Uh, so you can create your uh, applet in QML and then prac, put in kdeapps, and then it should go. you can download it because QML doesn't require any compilation at, at all. So it should be easier to deploy uh, applets as well. So we're gonna give a demo. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we can't hook up the N900 up there, so it will be handmade demo. Yeah, and uh, just uh, some disclaimers about that, besides the one that Alexia Red did is that uh, we are running uh, Plasma Mobile uh, full screen, but with Hilton Desktop, that's the window manager on my MO5. We needed that to, to have like input, because otherwise uh, we would be stuck. And uh, that's why actually we need Queen to be there as soon as possible. And that's why I'm looking to Martin's uh, talk, even if it's during the match. Um, Applets used here, they are not related to the activities. You see that, okay, we'll go to social activity and there will be a, a notes applet there. Okay, it's just, uh, it's, we are not there yet. Uh, we have a lot of work to be done. And uh, there are lots of things that we talked about that are missing because this is a work of just a few days and we need to work more on that. We need to polish, we need more manpower on that. So whoever wants to to help us with that is welcome. So we'll do some, okay, yeah, let's try to do the demo. So by the way, I don't know if Till is in the room, but it's the same as the, the proprietary application and it's actually doing the same purpose and it's VLC and it's open source <laughs> and it works. And it has the mirror feature if you really want to. Yeah, I mean, you can deactivate it as well. Uh, you can change everything. That's cool. And it's free software. 
Yeah, but you can actually have the other way as well if you really want to. Okay, so this is the Plasma Mobile on the M900 with the clock. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not Plasma. <laughs> um, um, so you can see here, you can actually drag the, the, um, the activity switcher, and as I said, it gets away if you don't use it. So, for instance, you can switch to another activity, up, and then there is, let's say, the games, right? You can play 15 puzzle. By the way, 15 puzzle is broken in trunk. If you click, it's completely fucked. <laughs> but anyway, um, so you can find the switch, and then here you can click, you see, and then the input method actually works, right? Um, so you can up, close back, then come back. You can actually switch. And as I said, right? And then, so for instance here, right? And then as I said, if you click here back, then if you rotate, click, then it's actually rotate, and then you get your apps, right? But as you can see here, if I switch back to uh, to, uh, to the main view, oops, my finger off. And here I change to another activity, and I actually switch back, then you see the, con the content is actually different. So here I have another application. So, yeah, that's pretty much all for now, right? It like needs a lot of works. But ah, my fingers. Dude. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but you see, performance are quite okay, right? We didn't do that much optimization in Plasma itself. And uh, there's a bit of some kind of work on in Plasma Mobile to make it fast. But still, in Plasma, we have room of improvement. And that's, that's the good news. Um, four seven. Yeah, 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 I know it's like <laughs> I met some of them. <laughs> so you know, I saw it was slow, and I can fix it directly. <laughs> That's a cool feature. Uh, wait, I need to see that on the desktop one. The cool part is as well as like this year, uh, we actually have a summer cut student, which is quite nice because uh, uh, ma Marco, me, and Arthur, the guy that work in mostly on Plasma Mobile, are hardcore developers, and we like the uh, under the hood stuff. And so that's nice that we have this year uh, Jung and Ho Lim. <laughs> Uh, that is actually working on the Systray part of the mobile user interface. You know what I was talking about, like showing the battery and the clock and the uh, uh, network status. So because what happened is like the Systray implementation we have in uh, the netbook user interface and the desktop user interface, I mean, is not appropriate for touchscreen, right? It's using small icons, um, uh, it's made for mouse, and it actually have other events that you don't have on the touchscreen phone, right? Um, the tooltips, you can see them, but still, what is nice, everything is implemented, right? The plumbing is there, so what the student need to do is actually to uh, rewrite the, the UI part of it. So, I think he put I uh, pushed stuff on the on the SVN recently. I need to look at it with Marco this week and see how it goes. But um, if you look so far, like that was the mockup that he had. Of course, the Cisco itself is still the same. But like for instance, the notifications, he said, okay, we should have better notifications than what we have on the desktop. And for instance, if you get a new message, then it should be something like that, so you can actually click easily. Um, that's just mockup, right? I mean. Uh, by using the product, you'll see if it's good or not. Um, so, uh, so far, so so far, that's that's all for us. Like, I'll give the last word for Arthur. Okay. So, one thing that's very important when we talk about KDE Mobile is that everything that we showed here is basically the glue between the whole experience. We still need KDE applications to go there, as still uh, said during his talk. They are porting KDE uh, ping to, to the mobile world, but we also need media players, uh, PDF viewers. We need all this stuff. Otherwise, we can't provide a real KDE user experience, at least the whole KDE user experience, our whole potential. So this is just the glue between the whole thing and how we would uh, actually 
change between the applications in a nice way. So if everybody that wants to work on the mobile context, it doesn't need uh, to be just on Plasma. We have a lot of improvement on all applications. And for those that are starting new applications, you can already start thinking about how that application would look like on the mobile um, environment. So you can make sure that you use the right profiles for building, you, you, you have a, a, a code base that is not too attached to the UI, so you can easily change the UI. And we hope that with the technologies that we have right now, uh, it, it will be very easy for us to, to reach there. So that's, that, that was our talk. If you want to join us, please, uh, we have the email of the mailing list. We have our uh, channel. Uh, the code is on Playground right now. Uh, these are our emails. We will be here the whole, um, the whole week. If you want to see on the device, running on the device, actually, you can just come to us and ask. It's better probably than the demo that we did. And uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Um, did I misunderstand that one slide, or are you really going to drop KIO to save resources? So yeah, it's like I discovered that when I actually built it with the profile, so it's apparently deactivated. Perhaps Aaron can say it, why it's deactivated. It's probably, oh yeah. Yeah, on, on the mobile platform, um, the out of process nature of KIO really sucks. Um, you launch an, another um, app and then you're contact switching between it, or another ex another process, right? And you're contact switching constantly between the two of them, and it doesn't work out so well. And the thing about running, say, the on the N900 or whatnot, <clears throat> is for most applications, you're not going to be you're going to be doing all local access, and anything that's not local access is going to be going through one of the services. So the use cases for KO are remarkably slim and the overhead on a mobile platform like the N900 is amazingly high and so for that reason it's been made optional. Now each one of those um, items in the profile can be turned on or off. So if a device manufacturer goes, no that's actually really important to us, you can turn on the KIO support in KDE Libs. Um, so we have some default sets um, but you can actually tweak each of those features one by one. Yeah, it's just uh, a c uh, an option in the CMIC, right? CMIC D and then you get it back if you really want to. Uh, you also disabled WebKit, so I guess you're planning on using Gecko or something. What's your WebKit? Mm, uh, what's your no. So no, no. Uh, it's like that was no, no, no. K WebKit is is disabled um, because again, on a mobile platform, all of the platform. The reason why we have K WebKit is to provide inter platform integration, KDE platform integration, between Qt WebKit and our platform KDE. So in the mobile side, it already has native um, things for, you know, we don't need to provide a cookie jar and proxies yeah. for services and all of that. So, oh, sorry, we're supposed to stop talking about Kevin's talk. But anyways, no, there is WebKit. We are using WebKit, um, but it's the, it's the KDE specific stuff that gets dropped. Yeah, that's something I forgot to actually say is like, what, like, one thing that we have to think about is like we have to integrate in a platform, and that's the first time ever. And so, for instance, we can't hijack the style in K application and hard code oxygen inside. This is not, I mean, th this is not doable, right? We need to use the GDK style to actually have button that render properly. So when you actually l launch any config dialog in KDE, it's actually okay. So stuff like that. So this is a effort in KDE. We have to integrate, and that's a uh, change of the mindset a bit, right? For everybody. All right, any more questions? Anyone have? Oh, no, cool. Okay, then well, I would like to thank uh, Arturo and Alexis for their uh, wonderful talk. Um, hopefully, we'll be seeing the results of that coming sometime soon and give them a big round of report. applause. <laughs>